each of us is able to hear in our own language of the mighty works of God. Thank God it's Pentecost. Aren't you happy it's Pentecost? If for no other reason, we finally get to stop partying. I mean, 50 days of partying is hard work, wouldn't you agree? I mean, that's like celebrating 50 days of Christmas. Imagine how exhausting that has been, hopefully for you as it has been for me. I don't know about you, but I just want to get back to ordinary time. <laughs> but here we are. Before we get into ordinary time, before we venture into those days of, ah, uh, everything is just ordinary, the church gives us this great feast, the Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, often known as the birthday of the church. So if nobody has extended you birthday wishings yet today, let me be the first. Happy birthday to you. Yes, it is your birthday today because you and I are the church. But we must not seem to think that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was the first time that the Spirit why, made an appearance. Oh, if we were to think that, we would be we would be vastly wrong. For the Spirit has been around from the beginning. The Spirit is ever ancient and ever new. Why, we can go to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, and we will hear about the Ruha, or the Spirit that hovers over the waters. And it's this Spirit that indeed separates the water and the dry land. It is the same Spirit that is breathed through the nostrils of this clay form that is built by God and gives it life. It's this same spirit that helps prophets in the Old Testament have the courage to do what needs to be done, and that is to speak prophetically. It's the spirit that gives Jeremiah the courage, even though he's convinced he is way, way, way too young to do what God wants him to do. It is the spirit that indeed is ever-present even at the beginning of Jesus' life. It is by the Holy Spirit that you shall be conceived, that you shall conceive and that you shall bear a son. And you shall name him Emmanuel. It's the Spirit that Jesus acknowledges at the beginning of his, beginning of his public ministry. Why, Jesus says in Luke, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Why then, it's the Spirit that is at the beginning of Jesus' life, at his conception, the beginning of his ministry as he enters to bring about healing and hope and mercy and forgiveness to God's people. And then it is the Spirit that Jesus gives to the disciples who are huddled behind a locked door. It is that Spirit that enables then the disciples to no longer be afraid to leave the upper room, to go out into the open space and simply to share the good news of God. But what's amazing as we hear, as we hear in today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is that all these people that are gathered here, all these names that every lector for the Feast of Pentecost regrets having to be chosen to be read like Larry no doubt regretted it tonight having to come up with all those difficult names of the you know the Pamphylias and all that sort of thing. What's amazing is that you have all of these people who are gathered together who speak different languages and yet the Acts of the Apostles tells us this. Every one of them heard about the mighty works of God in their own language. Why is that important to you and I to hear? The reason why it's important is this. The Spirit of God comes to you and I as we are. Let me repeat that. The Spirit of God comes to you and I as we are. We don't have to learn a new language. We don't have to learn a foreign language. 
God gives us the Spirit as we are. Sinners, yes, indeed. People who struggle, absolutely. People who try our very best to do the very best thing, most definitely. Why? The Spirit comes to you and I as we are. Not as who God would like us to be or hope us to be or any of that sort of thing, but simply the Spirit is given to us as we are told in today's second reading, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone because everyone has a purpose to bring that Spirit and to enflesh it in our everyday lives and in the communities in which we gather. This coming Thursday, I have received an invitation to be part of a 29th commencement exercise at the Wilmer Area Learning Center. It's the commencement for 30-some young men and women who have gone through the alternative learning process. It's a big day for those 30 young men and women because those young men and women have experienced life in a not-so-normal way. They have faced great adversities in their life. And for many of them, they will be the first one in their entire family to ever get a graduate degree from high school. Adversities come in many different ways, as we know, whether that adversity was a language that they did not know called English and they had to learn that along the way. Adversity could be, of course, that they're from a single parent home. Adversity could be that they've come from an abusive home, whatever it is, but nonetheless, these are young men and women who have been given the Spirit of God and it's been given to them as they are. And they have had mentors and teachers and people who have helped them through this process so that they could come to this very day. My friends, that's just one example of how the Spirit of God is given to everyone. How the Spirit of God is made manifest in our own time, in our own place. It's because people believed in these young people and people dedicated their lives to helping them along the way so that hopefully then these young men and women as they get their high school diploma can likewise go out. They can go out because they have been given the Spirit of God as they are. They haven't had to learn a new language. They've been given this gift and now, and now they can hopefully go out and share that wisdom and the knowledge and the encouragement to others to be able to say, if I can do it, so can you. Today we celebrate the outpouring of a gift, ever ancient, ever new. It is a gift that transforms hearts. It is a gift that indeed hovers over the waters. It is a gift that is a gentle whisper, a driving wind. It is a gift that comes in the form of flaming fire. It is the gift that is ever-present, always and everywhere, at work in our life. It is a gift from God. It is the Spirit of Christ that enables you and I to go out, to go out into the world having received the gift of the Holy Spirit, to transform hearts, to lift up spirits of lives of those entrusted to our care, to go out, to go out, to share the mighty works of God in our own language.